we've got strong signals that shows that we could be in an AI bubble. But then, and we've got this. Yeah, we've got not. the other side that shows that we might not. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a tricky one. I mean, what are we looking at? For the AI bubble, we've got things like the valuations are inflated. We've got a lot of products we're seeing are rushed. And you've got market sentiment that's really driven more by that buzz than by business outcomes. And then, I don't know, Makoto on the other side, what, what are we looking at? You know, we're seeing foundational models that are super powerful. Exactly. We've got pretty much the infrastructure that can support them. When applied, you know, carefully, AI is transforming how business operate. That's right. I mean, we've seen it ourselves. I mean, look at the AI projects we're involved with. There is a tangible benefit to it. And there's something that given you take the time, like I was saying earlier, to identify how it's going to benefit you, you can't go wrong. Those are the things that, you know, coming back to things you can do is, you know, pilot things before you, you commit to them. You know, ask those right questions about what the learning curve for a tool is. Is your team going to use it? Is it going to actually deliver that value? And, you know, avoid tools that are going to require a constant sort of handholding from the vendor or if something needs ongoing explanation or support, it's not going to scale well internally. So I think we sort of look at those two sides and go like, okay, well, we could be, we couldn't be. Um, we sort of go from there in, in terms of, you know, make the right decisions and you're going to come out stronger and separate that substance from the hype. There's a bold prediction that we can make by 2027. I think there'll be two types of technology companies. Those that use AI as a tool to enhance human capabilities or those that have tried to replace human capabilities with AI. You can kind of guess which one will still exist. And our listeners, what you should kind of think about is what is your competitive adva advantage? If it can re be replicated by AI, you really don't have a competitive advantage. Absolutely. Also yeah. say, be careful where, again, where you invest everything. <clears throat> it may be more trying to set up, you know, strong foundations um, and you come to get your data in a good way to interact with AI, get your knowledge in a good way. Yeah, you know, I think that's where you're really going to, um, it's going to be beneficial. Just don't follow the crowd, jump into the first thing that you see. Yeah, and I think if you're building products and you're trying to launch software and you've got competitors, you know, really look at your current, your product strategy. You know, how much of it depends on having better technology versus having a better user understanding. Because, you know, the technology side is getting commoditized. But uh, I say the user's love and enjoyment doesn't. I'm curious, in video games, cheat codes let you skip months of grinding to unlock special abilities instantly. Have you ever wished for something similar for your software challenges? What if there's a way to instantly access 20 plus years of specialized expertise instead of developing it all internally? What if you could solve in weeks what might otherwise take months or years? Would you agree that most organizations face a steep learning curve when implementing new software solutions? At my company, Impact, we serve as that cheat code for companies looking to transform complex software into intuitive experiences that users love and that drive real business results. Would it be valuable to explore and how might this work for your specific situation? Visit impact.io for a free strategy session focused on your unique challenges.